Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so did I have Francesca Vavila on the line, and she's president at the Sales Joint. Francesca, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adam. I'm excited to be here. All right, so excited to have you on, and uh, so today we'll be talking about really small business cannabis success depends on mindset first sales, so excited to get your vantage point about what's going on, and obviously in sales, but in the cannabis market overall, and especially, I mean, one thing that we we kind of all notice is, you know, the market started at one place, and as it gets bigger and bigger, we look at maybe what the, you know, the larger corporations coming in, them getting their, their, uh, their, um, hand in the pot, so to speak, pun intended there, uh, Francesca, see what that <laughs> looks like. Um, but we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Francesca, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives. That's our mission. Francesca, what mission matters to you? At the sales joint, the mission that matters the most to us is bringing professional sales to craft cannabis. And by professional sales, we mean a systematic and strategic management of the whole customer pyramid with a no one grows alone mindset. And so with the, what we really mean by that is it's our mission to raise the practices of sales to a higher standard, to be relationship-based and not transactional focused, to be mindful, respectful of the integrity and the power of the plant, and to be always patient first because we believe that sales is a patient care issue in cannabis. So we're here to basically raise the stakes or raise the game of sales in cannabis when it comes to licensed um, dispensaries, growers, processors, producers. There's a better way to sell to make sure that they last in a highly competitive, ever-changing market. It's awesome. Um, and, and love having an expert on the line that is giving also a different vantage point, something that we don't talk about that often, I feel like. And as the market matures uh, uh, um, overall, I think that the opportunity there to create a better, we talk about, and we use this word all the time, user journey, right? And, uh, and, mm-hmm. and for when we think about apps or when we think about other things like that, we don't talk about it very often, in, in my opinion, in cannabis sales and what it looks like for that user journey um, and experience. So this is awesome um, having you on. I guess what, I guess the first thing I like to start out with, because you do have a unique vantage point, like, what do you find is kind of a lot of the problems um, that the current cannabis entrepreneurs are repeating that they're doing like over and over and over again that you're like, ah, I missed it. Like, that, that, OK, this is this this can be solved. Like, what are some of those problems? Yeah, it's it's such a unique industry because it's still federally illegal as a substance. And so mm-hmm. we are operating with each state being its own market, with its own legalization and its own mm-hmm. rules of engagement in that market. And yet we see so many overlaps and similarities. I do see things that are being done right over and over again with more of an emphasis on social equity, with, um, you know, more, I guess, insightful discussions around licensing caps and pricing and things like that. But yet we see the same mistakes being made by the people, the entrepreneurs entering the market. And I think the biggest one that we see is that they are focused on launching a product rather than launching a business. So a lot of times what producers do is they they look at a new emerging market and they say, okay, I want to be there for the beginning when it's really hot, when everybody can't wait to get their hands on some weed and, and I want to stake this claim right now and plant that flag. And so they fast track production, they fast track licensing, they they really try to go all in on product quality and quantity, which is not a bad thing, but what happens is they neglect the sales operations marketing of their business. And so when it comes time for them to actually put their product into the market, the ways that they do that are really a 
slapdash or uh, copycat of an imperfect process already. And so they don't put the, I guess, the weight behind the sales experience that they do upon the smoking experience. And that's the biggest mistake that licensed producers are making, um, is that we need to look at this as a business, not as you just growing fire. You know, that's, that's great. Do it. Grow fire. And then put a business behind it to make sure that people know why your weed is the best, know how to enjoy it best, know who you're speaking to, know what dispensaries it belongs in, um, and to get proactive in that approach rather than having to be in this big rush to the front of the line once you're in, you're, you can't find your seat because you just didn't think about that. <laughs> No, it's, it's a great point, and I and I I do make that text that similarity on the on the tech side, and I guess I'll go back to that to that app side of things. Mm-hmm. That that's that's you know when apps came out when they were first now it's a more mature market, but that was one of the things, right? How do you make the best app? How do you do this? How do you do that? And then it wasn't, and then you know because you have one, a lot of times I'd say early days of this, right? Like engineers or somebody with an idea or the tech background, they weren't necessarily the ones that knew anything about marketing or maybe even scaling mm-hmm. the business or different things. So I see a lot of the similarities of now this cannabis, you know, gold rush or green rush or whatever we call it is that, you know, some of the best people that have the best ideas or maybe they know the most about the plant, they know all these other things, but they may not be the best equipped for some of the other things that you're mentioning, right? The marketing, the other things, because now that it's such a competitive and I don't, I, I never like using the word saturated because I, I just, you know, it, it's all, it's all relative, right? But when we think mm-hmm. about um, like that, there's more competitive and savvy people playing the game. The old days of just your guerrilla marketing, and it's just going to take off just because you're the only person on the block. Like that's not going to cut it, right? Absolutely, and and it gets it's exactly like that. And there's a there's an apt analogy or, or comparison with engineers and mm-hmm. um, cannabis producers. You know, people who are really good at the creation of the thing. But the, the execution of the launch of the business is where they, they forgot it, there's, there should be an investment in that and, as well. And to treat that as its own area of expertise that needs, um, more influence, more, more attention and more priority. And it gets even more complicated when we're talking about state by state markets because mm-hmm. a lot of these states will say, yes, you can have a dispensary, but no, you cannot have a sign out your dispensary. No, you cannot have any social media advertisements in any for any cannabis. If you put cannabis in sales in any kind of platform besides, I think, LinkedIn, you know, you're going to get booted. So congratulations, you grew your Instagram to 20,000 followers. Instagram shut you down because you posted a picture of a flower and you had the word, you know, you had the, in the caption, 420 oh. sale happening. And now your, your entire, you know, marketing plan is gone. So without being knowledgeable about the, the micro markets, the, the legalization, the compliance in terms of sales and marketing, you're going to have an imperfect way to move product to market. And that's what people need to, to make sure that they are factoring into the license. You know, when they are getting their license, they also need to be planning the business side of their business. Mm. So I want to get a little specific with this one because I know this is your one of your specialties at the sales joint. So what's the difference between sales and professional sales in the in the cannabis arena? This is um, something that I am so passionate about because sales is in cannabis. There's no denying it. From you know mm-hmm. grower to processor, processor to dispensary, dispensary to patient, grower to dispensary. Sales, I mean, exists because the cannabis industry exists to buy and sell cannabis. So sales is here, but it's not where it should be. And by that, I mean we need professional sales, which is that strategic, systematic approach that treats the whole customer pyramid. A lot of people are looking at sales as hurry up and get that first sale. And and when I'm talking about sales, let me backtrack just for a second and say, I'm speaking of producers moving into the retail space, so a B2B sales transaction. And um, what producers end up doing is they spend all this time growing, and then they're looking just to get their ROI as fast as possible. So they'll move 100% or very close to 100% of their harvest through wholesale. They'll give it to a processor. They'll give it to a broker. 
they're selling bulk at bulk margin. So they're, they have a smaller customer pool if you're talking about the, you know, to the wholesalers or to the brokers for the least amount of money possible as quickly as possible. And it's all about getting that dollar back as soon as possible. When really we don't need to focus on the time, we need to focus on the sustainability. In professional sales, we are talking about a relationship-based sales approach. So you need to know who your customer is, who is actually going to be enjoying what you produce. Are, are we talking about you're making dabs for a very mature kind of market, then you need to look at the dispensaries that are going to have dabbers in that dispensary. If you're talking about exotic flower, who are the dispensaries that can appreciate and and value exotic flower because they have consumers that have, you know, more refined palate coming to them for that? Or are you just growing the best blue dream and you want to reach the boomers, you want to reach the newbies, you want to make it okay for new people to come and, and smoke your product? Great. Who are the dispensaries that are probably going to be more tourist driven or more age bracket driven? So identifying who your customers are, even on a B2B level of which dispensaries you sell into, now it's about you have that, you know, geographically where you want to be, customer persona where you want to be. Now it's about cultivating a relationship and understand, put yourself in the dispensary purchasing manager's position. They are getting, a lot of these people are getting 30 plus people walking through their door a day with a backpack of weed saying, hey, do you want some? And it's just not a professional sales experience. What we need is Really? Today, that did, that's not professional? What? Other <laughs> don't do that? Come on. Shocking. I mean, maybe my standards are too Your high. Your fi- financial advisors aren't just hanging out with backpacks and, like, pulling out paperwork. <laughs> hey, do you want to invest? What are you talking about? I'm not yeah, saying. exactly. <laughs> It's I mean, tax season, right? It's April fifteenth. That you're telling me they're not sitting out in front of H and R. Well, maybe somebody is actually uh, the sign, the the sign waivers. They are sitting in front of H and R Block with signs saying you want to do your taxes. <laughs> Never mind. I, I'm wrong on that one. Bad example. But I mean, it's so it's so not how you can create a repeatable business because if you are going to be one of thirty people that are doing the same thing that ultimately annoy the purchasing manager, hoping that only your product quality is going to get you seen. That's not a strategic approach to sales. What you need to know is who this purchasing manager is. Develop a relationship with them that is based on what their needs are and where you can solve a problem for them. And then make sure you do what you say you're going to do. Have the sample ready when you're going to have a sample. Send a manifest. Make sure the testing is included. Follow up after you make that initial sale because that initial sale, it's not the harvest, it's the seed you're planting at that point. So that $1,100, you know, one pound sale, great, good for you for that day. I'm not, I don't care about that. I care about the five pound sales that are going to come for the next three years after that every month, you know, and or every week and see how we can cultivate that. So, It's really about trusting that if you deliver as a producer, a professional sales experience is an experience that somebody wants to have with you over and over again. Then you get these loyal customers. You run a sales system. It's like lifting weights. Like, you know, you can you can go into the gym and, you know, whenever you feel like it and lift whatever weights you feel like. And maybe you lift the two pounds all day, you know, but you're you're doing it, you're lifting the weights, but you're not actually getting stronger. So a system to weightlifting would be, you know, how much you're going to lift, when you're going to lift, what areas you're working on, what has worked for you in the past, what to stop doing. Like sales is the same thing. Know what, track your metrics, make sure you follow up, make sure you know what's working and what's not so that you can have this long-term relationship. And that's a professional sales experience because it, you just win fans that way in – that way, when you have a bad harvest, when your product quality doesn't come out what you want it to do, because we're talking about a plant, things go wrong, then there's going to be something else that lets you survive with that customer past that harvest. You can keep them through other values that you have. And it's honestly the only way craft cannabis can compete with corporate weed is to make sure that they are giving this professional sales experience and delivering on the promises that they make. 
Awesome. Well, Francesca, I just have to say this has been great having you on the show. I know I learned a lot. I'm hoping the audience did as well. If somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about um, about um, the sales joint, and also I, I want to get in here uh, your 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 show, so Infused, a cannabis talk show on YouTube. Um, what's the best way for people to follow up, to connect, and to really just engage with your content as well? Oh, thanks so much, Adam. Um, this has been fun, and oh my gosh, did that time fly? Um, yeah, we can. You can always find us on social. Definitely follow the sales joint on Instagram. Twitter, Facebook, whatever you're on, TikTok, we, we're there. Um, and so you can hear about the pieces of sales advice, the sales collateral that we give out, um, the coaching and consulting that we offer. And then, of course, um, for more industry-related things, for the people that are in the business or even that are curious about the business, the can of curious, definitely check out our talk show, Infused, a cannabis talk show hosted by me, Nick and Mike, and we have some amazing guests on there, and we have some great conversations for anybody that's interested in the industry, wants to know what's going on, we've got it covered, and um, we have a lot of fun doing it. So it's not smoking a joint and talking about strains, it's actually talking about the business, but having a good time with it. (laughs) Fantastic. Well, um, I will put all that information in the show notes as well so our team can just, uh, so that our audience can just, you know, click on the links and head right on over and check out your show and also the website. Um, and speaking of the audience, if, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, we're, in, we're a platform that's all about bringing on executives, um, entrepreneurs, and experts and having them share why they do what they do, like what gets them motivated to get out there and to, you know, go into the market and make a difference. If that is the type of content that you're into or if that sounds interesting to you, um, hit that subscribe button. Uh, We definitely have uh, many more mission-based individuals and entrepreneurs coming up on the line, and we don't want you to miss any of those episodes. And Francesca, really, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, Thanks again for coming on. Thank you so much, Adam. It was a great time.